Do you like pierogies? If you do, then you can learn how to make your own from scratch at home. Today I'll share with you easy recipe of pierogies. No kneading is required. These are Ukrainian pierogies called Vareniki. You can use a lot of different things for filling of your pierogies. My favorite is farmer's cheese and egg yolk. Farmer's cheese is similar to cottage cheese, but it's more dry. Also, it is similar to Italian ricotta. The only difference is farmer's cheese is cultured, it has beneficial bacteria. So for this recipe, I'll be using half a pound of farmer's cheese and one egg yolk and a little bit of salt um, to savor it up. Some people add sugar, but I personally don't like sugar in my pierogies. But if you do, if you like things sweeten up, go ahead. So all you need to do is just mix things up and put it aside while we're working on our dough. And to make the dough, you will need 400 grams of flour. I am using wheat flour that's unbleached so my pierogies will not be super white um, also i'm using one teaspoon of salt regular table salt is fine one tablespoon of vinegar regular white vinegar there is no need to use special type of vinegars also two tablespoon of oil and 250 milliliters of boiling hot water it has to be hot, not just lukewarm or hot from the faucet. No, it has to boil and be uh, really hot because that's what makes this recipe uh, no kneading required. Uh, you don't have to knead your dough for 10-20 uh, minutes like other recipes are calling for. Here you just mix your water hot boiling water into the dough first with the spoon because you know you don't want to burn your hand but then when it cools down you just get everything together into uh, like a ball shape and um, just knead for 30 seconds that's all is required and put your um, dough into the bowl um, cover it with plastic wrap or kitchen towel and let it rest for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, divide your dough into two or three parts and roll out a little bit at the time. You don't want to roll all of your dough at the same time because while you will be working on some of uh, the pierogies, the rest of the dough will get dry and you don't want that to happen so i usually try to work with one third or half of the dough at the time in order to roll the dough out you will need some extra flour uh, in the bottom so it doesn't stick to your surface and it doesn't stick to the rolling pin Different people have uh, their own preferences in how thick or thin they want their dough for pierogies to be. I personally like um, medium, kind of, not too thin, uh, not that I can see the filling <laughs> inside of it, but also not that thick because it will be too chewy. So I would say that uh, the thickness of the dough that I prefer is probably one eighth of an inch but you can try different um, thicknesses and see which one um, you like more than other after you rolled out the dough you will need to use some kind of cup or a glass to cut circles i like to make circles some people use pizza cutter and they cut it into squares but those are harder to um, make and uh, it's easier to cut them but harder to make so i prefer to use um, glass and make circles it's very easy to do 
uh, you just have to press slightly into the dough and it cuts easily. The size of the circles is also uh, up to you. You can make them as big as you want, uh, but of course not like five inch big because those are gonna be uh, giant pierogies. Uh, mine are two and a half inches in diameter. Do not throw out the leftover dough. You can always roll it out and make more pierogies. Just make sure you cover it up so it doesn't dry out. Now the filling has to go into the pierogies. In my case, it's cheese. You can use um, boiled mashed potatoes, um, mushrooms, cabbage, meat, anything you like. Uh, there are so many variants and varieties. There's also people who like to make sweet type of pierogies with some fruits. My favorite fruit variety is sour cherries. I love those so much. But in the winter time, I like uh, potato and bacon pierogies and I like cheese. Cheese is so good. It reminds me Italian ravioli. Try to put a decent amount of filling because it kind of shrinks when it gets cooked. So I would say a tablespoon for each pierogi. And um, I like to squish the cheese together to make it stick because cheese is usually falling apart. Mashed potato is much easier to work with because it is very starchy and sticks together. For this amount of dough that we made, half a pound of cheese is exactly what you need. Now the most fun part. Some people think it's a hard thing to make pierogies, but all you have to do is to just fold it in half and press together both sides of the dough. It's not a hard thing to do. Dough is sticky, so naturally it wants to stick. All you have to do is just apply some force and it works just like that. Just make sure you do it two, three times. I mean pressing with your fingers two, three times just to make sure it actually has no gaps because if there will be a gap, the filling will run out when you boil your pierogies. And you don't want that to happen. You don't want to have your filling and pierogi separate. You have to work fast. Don't let your uh, pierogi circles with the stuffing sit for too long because the dough will dry up and then it will not want to stick together. That's why I said earlier to work with little amounts of dough at the time, divided in two, three parts. So you can just roll out a little bit and have maybe 10, 15 um, pierogies to work at the time and you will have no issues making them. You can also get creative and make your pierogies look good by doing these simple designs. So I'll show you a few of those that I practice once in a while. Of course, when I'm in a hurry, I don't do any of these. I just um, stick them together. But when I have guests or I just want to have fun with cooking my food, then I make these uh, different designs. So here I will show you how to make the braid. I mean, it's not actually braid, but it's something similar. So what you have to do is to make the end very flat and then fold it like this and then fold it again. And again, you make that part flat and fold it, flat and fold it. And just like that, it's not a hard thing to do. I'm sure uh, people who've made empanadas, piroshkis, or any kind of baked goods, they have done this before. So it's very easy to do. All you have to do is not to be afraid to uh, press the dough and stretch it. Uh, the dough is like a, like Play-Doh uh, that kids play with. You can always undo it and do it again. So don't be afraid of experimenting. Another design you can do is uh, what I call a star or half of the star. 
So all you do is just pinch the dough like that to make pointy things. And here you have it, a star. These design pierogies um, are just fun to do. They do not change the taste of the pierogi, obviously. Also, you kind of, um, they lose their shape a bit when you boil them, but it's just interesting thing to do. Another one is uh, what we call pilmeni, which is um, pierogi with meat. And this is the shape we turn them into to distinguish between them and regular pierogies. So you basically just um, fold it in half and put one thing on top of the other. And this one I call a flower because it's similar to the star, but it's more um, petals-like uh, shaped. Um, so all you do is you just press the dough into the pierogi itself to make the waves. And it's also very easy to do. Dough wants to stick. Remember I told you it is very sticky. So you don't have to apply too much pressure. It will stick easily. Once you have your pierogies ready, I would suggest putting them on a plastic wrap on some flat surface like a um, chopping board or a tray and putting them into a freezer. So um, that way you can cook them anytime you want. You don't have to eat them the same time you made them. Do not let them sit room temperature because they will dry up. And I put them on the plastic wrap uh, just to prevent them sticking to the board. Cooking pierogies is very simple. I'm sure most of you have done that with store-bought pierogies. You just have to boil some water, add salt, and add your frozen pierogies in to the water. If you are cooking the pierogies right away after making them, then you don't have to boil them for too long. Two, three minutes is enough. Usually when they swim up to the top of the water, that means they are ready. If you have cooked them from being frozen, then you need to cook them for five to seven minutes. I love to serve my pierogies with some fried onions. Sometimes if it's pierogies with potato, I add bacon. If it's not potato pierogies, then I do not like adding bacon. But if you like bacon and everything, you can use it. I just like to have uh, fried onions and some dill. Also, traditionally in Ukraine, we serve pierogies with sour cream. Now I live in the United States and my favorite sour cream is Canadian. <laughs> yes, it's uh, the closest uh, that reminds me Ukrainian sour cream. And uh, to test your pierogies if they are ready or not, you just have to take out one, cut it and taste. When pierogies are done, you mix them up with fried onions and serve. Here is the slideshow of the pierogies I have made in the past. You can uh, add some turmeric or saffron to make them yellow or um, spinach juice to make them green. If you want to play around, you can try different varieties and see which one you like the most. And let me know in the comments below what flavor of pierogies you like and why. And tell me if you ever made pierogies from scratch at your home. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my pierogi video. Bye!